Hello YouTube students, my name is Vincent and today I want to take a look at the Pythagorean identity sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. The goal is going to be to prove this Pythagorean identity and to do so, let's go ahead and take a look at the Cartesian plane and we'll look at a general circle and we'll center it at the origin and we'll give it a radius of r. So if it has a radius of r centered at the origin, that means we could extend to the right r and we'll go up 0, this point here would be 0 r, this point would be negative r 0, and finally we could look at 0, negative r. Now if we did use the unit circle, in some sense it would simplify the algebra, but we could go ahead and generalize it for any circle, just to show how powerful this identity is. So next, let's go ahead and isolate a particular point, and we'll call this point we'll call this point x1, y1. So we're looking at x1, y1. But how do we get to this point? We start at the origin, and we go a horizontal distance of x1, and we go a vertical distance, y1. Keeping in mind, since we are in Cartesian or rectangular coordinates, the way they're defined, when we trace our path there, we're making a right uh, I'm sorry, we're making a right angle. So now let's go ahead and connect these two points. We're connecting the origin to the point x1, y1. And we'll call this angle, right here, we'll call this angle theta. This angle is created using the x-axis and the segment connecting the origin to the point x1, y1. And now what could we say about angle theta. Well, this is where the definition of the trigonometric functions will come in. Let's look at cosine of angle theta. But before we evaluate cosine of angle theta, let's go ahead and call this missing side r. Since we are on a circle centered at the origin with radius r, that means that the distance from the center to any point on the circle will have a distance of r. So we could go ahead and label the missing side or the hypotenuse. We'll label it r. So now we're looking at cosine of angle theta. Well, keep in mind, cosine of theta is the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse. So the ratio of this side adjacent to theta, the adjacent side would be x1 and the hypotenuse would be r. And we're, we could also look at sine of theta. Keeping in mind that sine theta is the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse. So the side opposite of theta, in this case, is y1, and the hypotenuse is still r. And I'm going to go ahead and write this as cosine theta over 1, sine theta over 1. Because now what this allows us to do, we could cross multiply, and we could go ahead and substitute for x1. So the final product of this, we would have x1 times 1 is x1. So we have x1 equals after we cross multiply here, we could cross multiply in this direction, and we have this equals r cosine theta. And we have we can do the same thing for y1. y1 times 1 is y1, and this is equal to r times sine theta. So we're going to use this now to prove the Pythagorean identity sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. But what, is this, uh, what do we have now? Well, instead of looking at this as x1, let's go ahead and name this r cosine theta. So we're looking at r cosine theta. And instead of y1, we could go ahead now and substitute r sine theta. So we're looking at r sine theta. And now what can we do? We have a right triangle, and this is where the Pythagorean theorem comes in. Remember, the Pythagorean theorem states, I'll call this leg 1, leg 2, hypotenuse. The way the Pythagorean theorem works, we could say that the length of leg 1 squared plus the length of leg 2 squared equals the hypotenuse squared. So let's go ahead and apply this to this right triangle we have here. Well, the first leg we could say that this is, we'll go ahead and we'll start with r sine theta. So we're looking at r sine theta 
squared plus r cosine theta. We're squaring this equals, I'll go ahead and take this out of the way now, equals the hypotenuse squared, which in this case is r. So now how can we simplify this left-hand side? Well, r sine theta times r sine theta is r squared sine squared theta. And now r cosine theta squared would be r cosine theta times r cosine theta, which is r squared cosine squared theta. And this is equal to r squared. But what do you notice with the left-hand side? We have a common factor of r squared. So what does that allow us to do? We could factor this out. So we could factor out an r squared, and what are we left with on the first term? Well, when we divide r squared sine squared theta by r squared, all that's left is sine squared theta. And now, by a, uh, by a similar argument, all that's left of r squared cosine squared theta is cosine squared theta. And this is still all equal to r squared. But now, what can we do? We could divide both sides by r squared. Now the r squared over r squared will cancel on the left hand side and on the right hand side it will also cancel and all that's left, keep in mind we can think of this all as times 1 all that's left on the right hand side is 1 so now this allows us to write the final product which is going to be this Pythagorean identity we just showed now that sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. No matter which radius we choose when we build our circle on the Cartesian plane. So really this identity here, when they say Pythagorean identity, this is just a, a way to restate the Pythagorean theorem using polar coordinates. Okay, well this is going to conclude this proof as well as this video. Thank you all for watching and I hope that it was helpful.